It has been excused. Legislator Burke here. Legislator Burns was excused. Legislator Gilbert here. Legislator Chartrand has been excused. Legislator Morgan here. Legislator Calzer here. Legislator Osborne here. Legislator King here. And Legislator Dalhoff here. We've all stand and it's the flag for the point. I put the allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The March 2nd, 2021 board meeting minutes have been distributed. There are no amendments. They stand approved. <laughs> Report of the Finance and Rules Committee for Rule 6, Cassandra. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Finance and Rules Committee has met, and they recommend to waive rules to act upon late resolutions. Any motion? Jerry, second. Greg, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carries. <laughs> Privilege of the floor. We have three uh, public hearings tonight. First one will be public hearing on submitting a New York State CDBG housing application for 2020 funds with Snowball Housing as the sub recipient. Next is a public hearing on the proposed Lewis County Agricultural and Farmland Protection Plan. And the third is a public hearing on proposed New York State Police Reform and Reinvention Collaborative Plan. So we'll start with the first. I understand that um, Cassandra has something she needs. We need to read into the minutes. Tonight's public hearing is for the purpose of hearing public comments on the county's community development and housing needs and to discuss the possible submission of one or more community development block grants, CDBG, applications for the 2020 housing fund round this year. The CDBG program provides funds to local governments for housing, economic development, public facilities, public infrastructure and planning, and the principal beneficiaries being persons of low or moderate income. The CDBG program is administered by the New York State Office of Community Renewal, and the program may also aid in eliminating slums and blight and in addressing urgent needs. This hearing will provide information about and allow for participation in the possible development of this grant application, receive comment on any proposed projects, and receive technical assistance to develop alternative proposals. Uh, the hearing is being conducted in compliance with requirements of the Housing and Community Development Act of 1974 as amended. Approximately $10 million in available, is available for community development block grant funding for housing activities for this funding round, and the application is due by April 9th, so that's this Friday. The county can apply for up to $1 million for housing projects. Uh, that would include housing rehabilitation, home ownership assistance, replacement of mobile homes, and residential water and wastewater systems, um, such as well and septic system replacement. And that primarily benefit low and moderate income persons. At least 51% of the persons benefiting from the CDBG program will be low and moderate income persons, according to the HUD income limits provided in this application. And 70% of the New York State CDBG funds expended <laughs> must benefit low and moderate income persons. Thank you, Kathy. Jay, mm -hmm. hey, you have something also? Yes. <clears throat> um, so I would like the county to consider two applications for this funding round. One for homeownership assistance for $377,239. That was a mouthful. <laughs> no. um, since the money has to be spent in two years from the time of the award. The program would provide down payment, closing costs, and repair assistance to income eligible applicants to purchase their first home. This assistance will be in the form of a 100% deferred payment loan for up to $40,000 per unit. And this would become a grant as long as they remain in the home for 10 years. The home must be an existing single family home located anywhere in the county. Approximately nine households would be assisted. The second application would be for owner-occupied housing rehabilitation program that could provide a maximum of 40,000 per unit to income eligible homeowners 
that would be in the form of a 100% deferred payment loan that would be a grant as long as they remain in their home for five years. The types of rehabilitation activities to be undertaken would be plumbing, electrical, roof, windows, insulation, well and septic replacement, and any other work that would reduce health and safety hazards. Accessible modifications will also be undertaken, such as installing ramps and adding accessible kitchens or bathrooms. The amount of this grant would be $610,064 to assist 14 households. The proposed CDBG activities are not expected to result in any displacement of the tenant. For housing activities, homeowners should not encounter displacement unless the home needs to be uh, that is renovated needs contains lead. Um, that would require a family to be out of the home while it's stabilized. In that case, Nobel would put them in a hotel or motel for a short-term stay. We would ask or Snowbelt would administer the grant as a sub-recipient of the county, and we would ask that anyone who is interested in either program call 315-376-2639, extension 4. And they will um, complete a short survey and be played it, uh, placed on the waiting list at this time. Thank you, Jaylen. Anyone else have comments? Cheryl? I'm, I'm, I'm sure just, that I'm, I'm you, just here to, for moral support. If you have any questions, I thought, I thought maybe you were, you know, suffering from withdrawal. Or <laughs> Actually, I didn't expect to be back here so soon, Larry. <laughs> the application came up, and and Snowbell asked me to, um, some, you know, work with them to submit the application, and so I said, okay, you pay me, and I'll do it. <laughs> so uh, that's why I'm here. Just you know, if anybody has any particular questions about anything, so. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Is there anyone else here that would uh, like to comment on the public hearing for the CDBG housing application? If not, we'll leave that open for now and just move to the public hearing on the proposed Lewis County Agricultural and Farmland Protection Plan. Is there anyone here that would like to offer anything, any comments to that public hearing? We will leave that one open and proceed to the public hearing on the proposed New York State Police Reform and Reinvention Collaborative Plan. Is there anyone here that would like to comment on that plan? In that case, we'll leave all three of them open and we'll proceed to presentations of petitions, communications, and notices. Cassandra. Um, if you don't mind, Mr. Chairman, I do have something to read um, during privilege of the floor. This was received by Village of Turin Mayor Josh Lebecker. On behalf of the Village of Turin, we would like to thank all of the volunteer fire departments, Turin, Constableville, Martinsburg, Lyons Falls, Fort Lydon, Lawville, Boonville, and 3G. Due to our volunteers' quick response and dedication, the fully engulfed fire was contained to the brick block building, saving the neighboring homes. Additional thank yous to our local EMS, county fire coordinators, state and county police, Lewis County Highway Department, Town of Turn Highway Department, New York State DOT, National Grid, local restaurants who donated food and drinks, and the South Lewis School Administration who worked with the Village Board by agreeing to close the school in an effort to conserve water. And lastly, to all the local residents who offered to help in any way or by just saying the kind words of thank you, as these words mean so much to our volunteer men and women. It was unfortunate to see this structure destroyed by fire as it was the focal point of the village since the mid to late 1800s. A part of the village may be gone, but will not be forgotten. Okay, presentations of communications and notices. A resolution was received from Hamilton County urging the governor and federal government to expand broadband and rural cellular coverage to all New Yorkers. A resolution was received from Fulton County calling upon New York State legislators to curtail Governor Cuomo, Andrew Cuomo's emergency powers authority. A resolution was, was received from Cattaraugus County urging Governor Cuomo to halt closure of Gowanda Correctional Facility. A card was received from the Town of Diana Historical Museum thanking the Board of Legislators for their support and generosity. 
The February 25th, 2021 minutes from the Intercounty Legislative Committee of the Adirondacks was received. Carol Murray, Murray submitted correspondence to the board voicing her concerns over the well-being of our youth during the pandemic, specifically referring to their physical and mental health and asking the board to consider granting funds to Double Play Community Center to provide wellness opportunities for the youth of our communities. Don Arthur submitted correspondence to the board in support of the proposed resolution designated Lewis County as a Purple Heart community, but had concerns over the five memorial plaques that were taken out of the courthouse lobby due to complaints of misspelled and missing names. He offered his research and assistance to get the plaques corrected so they could be redisplayed in the lobby by August 7th to continue to honor those individuals' sacrifice. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I should offer a privilege of the floor to anyone in, in a general scope. If there's anything anyone would like to address on the privilege of the floor, you're welcome to okay. do so. If not, we will move on to reports of county officers and departments. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Legislators received the March 2021 Treasurer's Report, Highway and Solid Waste March Audit Reports, and Quarterly Bed Tax Report. The 2020 annual reports have been received from Public Health and Social Services. Senior Code Official Ward Daly submitted his report on the former Lewis County Dairy Building, recommending that the county assume a proactive stance and secure the building from unauthorized entry, citing local law 2-2007. He also submitted his report on a vacant condemned residence on the number four road in the town of Watson, recommending that the county order the demolition and removal of the structure, citing local law 2 2007. And Brian Mooney submitted the February 2021 Sealer of Waste and Measures Activity Reports, which have been placed on file with the clerk of the board. That concludes my report. Thank you. <coughs> Reports of standing committees. Tom, would you like to start with financial rules, please? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like to make a motion to approve the Cyber Liability Insurance Renewal with Eastern Shore Associates through NYMIR for the period of April 5th, 2021 to April 5th, 2022 for a total premium of $15,831.54. I make that motion. Moved by Tom, second by Greg. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carries. And that's all I have to find, Mr. Chairman. Any questions for Tom? <laughs> if not, we'll move on to Jerry with General Services Committee. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have three motions tonight. The first motion is to award bid for hot asphalt based on, <coughs> excuse me, project location in accordance with tabulations of all bids prepared by the highway superintendent and the place on file with the, placed on file with the clerk of the board for the period of April 1st, 2021 to March 31st, 2022. And I'll make that a motion. Moved by Jerry, second by Andrea. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carries. Okay, motion to award bids for uh, various vendors for ball oil lubricants in accordance with the tabulation of all bids and respective low prices on file with the clerk of the board for the period of April 1st, 2021 to March 31st, 2022, and I'll make that a motion. Moved by Jerry, <laughs> second by Andrea. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carries. <clears throat> Excuse me, and a motion to authorize Bill and Brown Supervisor Matt O'Connor to send out RFP for the water portion of the PSB project based on specs that fourth coast, that fourth coast design. Moved by Jerry, second by Andrea. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> and that carries. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's all I have. 
Anyone have questions for Jerry? If not, we'll move on to Andrea with Health and Human Services. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have two motions. The first motion is to authorize Social Services Commissioner Jennifer Jones to refill one full-time social services program examiner position due to promotion effective March 22nd, 2021. And I'll make that motion. Moved by Andrea. Second by Lisa. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carries. Okay, I have a second motion, and that is to authorize Public Health Director Ashley Wade to refill one full-time clerk position due to resignation effective immediately. And by I'll Andrea. Second. second by Lisa. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? That carries. Um, I would like to make a report on our COVID-19. Um, we have 43 active cases with one hospitalization. 2013 total confirmed cases since last March. But I'm sorry to say we have 29 deaths. And at this time, I would like to encourage folks to get vaccinated. It's really important and um, unselfish to do this. Um, also, all people over the age of 16 are now eligible for vaccines in New York State. Uh, we have 7,805 first doses given. We have 5,207 fully vaccinated. And in order to reach a level of vaccinations, to fully reopen the community, we need to begin focusing on community education. The Board of Legislators may wish to consider shifting some funds from special legislative, legislative contingency to public health education to push this effort forward. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for Andrea? So I have some thoughts here, and we can uh, decide we will, we will make motions tonight on these things, or if you want to hold off until the, the committee meetings um, later on in the month. First topic would be apply for Cassie's grant in Port Leiden. Um, I don't know when that application needs to be submitted. Uh, we have to, it's a CDBG program, so we have to actually do a, a public hearing for that, and I have that on my dockets for um, our General Services Committee in April. So we're going to go for it? Okay, or, yep, okay. it's the NBRC that, but that's also on my docket for next month. I'm planning to do that. Okay, that's good. <laughs> so forming an ad hoc committee uh, to um, address the broadband initiative, I guess I'll call it. Um, is that the way we want to move this path forward? Is everyone okay with that? If somebody wants to make a motion that we form an ad hoc committee, I'll, I'll move that forward. I'll make that motion. Tom, um, a second by Greg. All in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Okay, we'll do that if you have an interest in being on that ad hoc committee, let me know and uh, we'll go from there. Next question is the big one, and that is um, how much money would we like to set aside for um, broadband from the stimulus? And we're expecting around $5 million and I'm looking for a suggestion of setting $2 million of that aside to um, move broadband in Lewis County forward. So thoughts on that? Is that something that's in the realm of acceptability? Um, where would you like to go with that? I thought you wanted 100000 
That's just for one grant. I'll take two million to do that. Where's that two million dollars? Where's that number coming from? Yeah, we are expecting five million dollars from the federal <laughs> stimulus. So it would come from that money. Obviously, if we didn't get it. Uh, no, sorry. Let me. Um, do you have like why choose two million? Like I guess that's where I'm asking. Well, it's probably that's you know what it's going to cost to you know if we're actually going to build infrastructure. Um, that's probably a good guesstimate of what it's going to cost to do that. How much? How much consideration? That at least I had an idea about talking to the towns and villages because my read there's not a whole lot that they can spend their stimulus money on, and at least in New Bremen. <laughs> the talk is about putting that toward infrastructure for the project because that does seem to fall under appropriate uses. So, I don't know. You know, I'm not suggesting that we're going to spend two million, maybe we should look at it as a cap, and maybe two million is more than what you're comfortable with. Maybe we should go for less than that and review it as we get further down the road. Um, when we Really get some kind of a guidance or a concrete number on what it's actually going to cost. I guess we're, I'm just trying to we're looking for a commitment of where we're at and you know what this board is comfortable with, so that you know, we can work with Dank and, and you know and, and try to move the thing forward. I don't want to get Dank and. <clears throat> other people, other entities involved in this thing, and then find out that it's going to be a million or two million dollars, and then we turn around and say, thank you, Bob. And we're not interested. So. I think we should also have the opinions of the existing legislators. I mean, I'd be good, I'd be good with a million. I mean, I don't have a problem, but when you start taking almost half, you know, that two million, you only get even three. I think there's other things we need to look at as a county for our infrastructure. I mean, last year we did nothing with the highways, you know. So our roads are, you know, we, I don't really want to see our roads left out of the picture, you know, and it's only five, it's not like $5 million is going to go a long ways, but it'll, it'll certainly help. But there are other projects, I think, that are vital to help, help this county out. So I'd be, I wouldn't mind setting aside like a million dollars, which was halfway there. But also, we could get grant funding. You know, it's a hundred thousand dollars gets us a million. You know, I mean, I mean, right, right. You know, there, who knows what the technology will, that they'll want to go with? I mean, they, they they explained how if you hooked up uh, wireless to the fiber optics on route. 12 down in Port Light, you could hit the whole building, you know, which is underserved right now. And the same with Watt and Lines. So, so, and there's other probably possibilities for height. I mean, that's, that seemed to be the problem is height. But I mean, we have the tower up on Montague. And can we use, could we actually talk to like the wind tower people? Can they put an antenna on one of those things? I don't know. The new one's going up for what, 600 foot? That's pretty high, you know. So that might help with the Denmark issue. <coughs> so we don't want Ron to get any service. <laughs> well, it's hard to get service when you're in your gun safe in the summer. <laughs> <laughs> that's just my opinion. <laughs> well, you know, until they run that stuff, we're not going to have answers for our questions. <clears throat> Somewhere along the line, I hate to say, money's got to be spent to figure out what we can and can't do for these projects and which one's the most cost effective. Because it's going to take information for us to move it forward. Right. Are we good with million? Would you like to make that motion? I'll do it. One million. Ian, I have a second. Um, any further discussion on it? Motion carries. So we'll move on at this point to 
Uh, Dick is not here, so Jerry Kater, our hospital CEO, is here to give us an update on the capital facilities project. I have a quick PowerPoint. So there are uh, two things I'll report on from our last board meeting. The first is, um, well, this is warming up. Uh, visitations are nearly back to normal in all sectors of the system. Uh, so the nursing home, short of a um, resident becoming positive, COVID positive, or an employee, um, our community members are getting full access to the facility. So long overdue. Um, it was reported to me late last week there were uh, physical positive changes as a result of uh, the residents getting their family members back. So that's encouraging. Um, on the acute side, medical, surgical, and ICU, we're back to where we were pre-COVID, and um, we're back nearly to normal on OB, uh, the maternity ward. Um, there are still some restrictions, but not nearly as restrictive as they had been. So but that's good news. I wanted to give you an update on the capital project and spent a lot of time at the last board meeting on that. So, you know, it's really the future of Lewis County Health System. And um, no matter um, what um, professional journal I read these days, they really talk about robust investment, very important for New York State hospitals. New York State is one of those states that has lagged behind investments in their acute infrastructure. There are obviously exceptions that we could all point to where, you know, the shiny new building, a lot of glass and brass. Um, that certainly is not the case for most of New York. And it's certainly not the case for critical access hospitals. In fact, critical access hospitals have not had a significant certificate of need approved in the last 20 years. So that's what we're dealing with. So uh, there is a critical need for capital infrastructure for New York State hospitals. That includes Lewis County, and that's why I'm here with you today. So the first picture is a color shot of the original hospital. The lower picture is a colored shot of what it currently looks like today. The hospital has not conducted a major renovation or concluded a major renovation since 2007 when the emergency department was expanded. The medical surgical wing and the current two operating rooms were constructed in the 1960s. The health system currently consists of a 25-bed critical access hospital, 160-bed long-term care facility, four off-site community health centers, and seven on-site um, health clinics, so uh, distinct physician practices. Some drawings of what it will look like. What you're seeing is the surgical pavilion um, here and um, two angles. If you're looking at the hill that's behind the hospital, you would be looking down on the surgical pavilion main entrance. The, the bottom picture reflects what it would look like from parking lot six or where the helicopter landing zone is. So there are five points, five major things that need to come together for the project to move forward. One, the CON approval for the medical, surgical, and ICU revitalization initiative must be approved, okay? And right now, where we are in the process is on June 8th, is going to the Public Health and Health Planning Council of the Department of Health. Now, we submitted the CON back in September of 2020. Uh, we were projecting uh, to go to this council in January of 2021. 
it was then moved to February, and um, it was then uh, moved to April, and then um, in April we were told it would, or at the end of March we were told it would go to June. So right now it's scheduled for June eighth. This is an important step in the process. We are also working our way through the critical access hospital recertification process. And uh, this has been an ongoing process. Uh, Lewis County General was critical access approved in 2014. And the second recertification is six years after the, the recertification is six years after the initial certification. So we were supposed to be recertified in May of 2020. Because the federal government issued um, a disaster declaration because of COVID, an emergency declaration, the recertification was pushed off until December of 2020. And you might remember at an earlier a board of legislators meeting, Greg, you asked like where we were with this. I, I think that was maybe February-ish. Mm -hmm. Well, we were working our way, expecting recertification to be in May of 2021. Um, last month, we received word that it's been, the can's been kicked down the road until December of 2021. This is an important step because there are two things that need to be accomplished in order for the bond to be issued. One is the CON approves our project and two, recertification occurs. Recertification is a little bit challenging uh, this go around because in 2015, the federal government changed the definition of primary and secondary roads, which influences which rural hospitals become critical access hospitals. No one was aware of that change until early in, late in 2019, early 2020, when Messina General Hospital in St. Lawrence County applied for critical access designation and they were denied, and they were denied based on the definition of primary and secondary road. Today, those definitions align with the Department of Transportation definition. Back in the day, they did not. Back in the day, our distance from uh, Lewis County to Carthage Area Hospital met the criteria. Under the new definition, it would not were both impacted, both Carthage and Lewis County. The difference is our recertification goes ahead of theirs by one month. So we're, we're both dealing with the same issue, as is um, six other hospitals. So there are uh, seven other hospitals. There are a total of nine hospitals, critical access hospitals in New York State, which is half are impacted by this definition change. So um, two weeks ago, I was on a conference call with Haney's and that included both their Albany staff and their Washington staff. Um, as you know, uh, Elise, uh, Congresswoman Stefanik is very engaged on this topic as well as Senator Schumer. And just the way things are in Washington these days, having Senator Schumer so actively involved is very important. So that is the second point of five that we must work through. There's a public bidding process and nothing new you know, to you. We had anticipated um, our project being uh, approved by the Public Health Council in April. So took a risk of opening up the bid process. There are some specific rules around how long and when you have to open the bids and how long the bids are good for. Once our project was kicked to the June council meeting, we paused. So 
we started and we paused and we just have to wait till the council approves it and we can clarify that we will be critical access recertified. Number four, once that happens, um, we would pursue issuance of the bond. It's $33 million. Um, I learned from Mr. Pache that uh, bond, bond council who met with all of us passed away um, during this period of the pandemic. So, you know, that's, you know, sad um, for his family, um, but it is my understanding we will continue to work with the firm and that, you know, the project will be handed off to another member uh, within the firm. So obviously we don't pursue that step until we have the CON and we have the recertification. And lastly, um, <coughs> the foundation capital campaign um, has been initiated. Um, the title of the campaign is Honoring the Legacy, Building the Future, and the goal is $2.4 million. I think the battery is up. There you go. There we go. Thanks. Okay, so these are the timelines um, right now. In fact, this week, it'll either be Wednesday or Thursday, I think, we'll have a Zoom meeting with the Department of Health Certificate of Need Unit, and that's to confirm we are truly on target for the Public Health and Health Planning Council, and are there any other questions? The application is phenomenal. It's three inches thick. Um, so uh, we're going to spend some time with them. Uh, June 8th. If all goes well, we'll go to council. Um, sometime between 621 and 1221, uh, the critical access recertification uh, should occur. Obviously, closer to 621 is helpful. Uh, the public bidding process will be sometime between 621 and 1221. Issue the bond. Uh, the earliest it could happen if everything fell into place would be July. I don't think that's realistic, and I think it'll be more towards the end of the year. Capital campaign, um, we're in the infrastructure building right now, the capital campaign. Um, the real portion of the fundraising will begin in August, and will continue through the achievement of the goal. Shovel in the ground, um, based on a review with our project manager and the architectural and engineering group, they they basically are telling me uh, it'll be late winter 2022, uh, so March, April of next year. That's very disappointing, but if uh, we don't get all the approvals in place early enough, then we're not going to have enough time to get the shell of the surgical pavilion constructed before you know winter comes um, and construction of these types of buildings are, are not best when it's you know 10 below zero uh, completion right now has been bumped a full year so it's now 12 23 and if everything had you know basically our pre-covid number was well, 22. So that's that's the timeline. So thank you for your time. And if you have any questions about this or anything uh, about the hospital or the health system, <coughs> I'll take them now. Please anticipate these things moving forward with your time length of that log. It's where you think you could get that pushback Yeah, if if it, if it is bumped to the late summer for the public council meeting, then I think it'll go past 12:23. Yeah. So at this point, I think um, there's reason for optimism with the council. The probably the second biggest and most important unknown is a critical access recertification. I find it hard to believe that it would not happen. Right. Um, critical access designation was created because rural hospitals across the country were closing. And there are 18 of us in New York State. So 
Um, but that's incredibly important. And because it requires rule changes within the Medicare uh, program, that adds a whole layer of complexity. I've actually got through and talked to somebody above this. Uh, it was an exercise in patience, but very kind. Um, but I'll tell you, there is no gray area. They refer to the regulation. And you either change the regulation through regulatory process or there's a law that's created that can change it. And so basically at this point, it would be faster to get the law. And that's where Senator Schumer would be very helpful. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Jerry. Moving on to the county manager report, right, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, well, we've been waiting and watching uh, what's happening in Albany, and the state budget is officially delayed at this point. It was supposed to be approved by um, the first, and obviously it's the sixth. The state comptroller uh, sent a note to the legislature yesterday afternoon saying that uh, if they do not settle the budget in the next 48 hours, there's a risk of state employees being delayed their paychecks, uh, which would obviously not be good for the state. So um, there's a couple items that have been settled, and there's a couple items that are unsettled that we've been watching. We've obviously been watching the uh, cannabis marijuana issue very closely. That has been settled. Um, it is currently legal in New York State anywhere to carry three ounces of marijuana on your person and a certain um, weight in, in the pounds uh, in your home. And so there's more details to come on that in terms of you know what the county's role is gonna be. We're gonna have to have some more discussions. Um, I will say that the tax issue that we were watching um, that NISAC was advocating for did not shake out in the county's favor. Uh, on any typical purchase, you guys know that you pay 8% sales tax on anything. 4% uh, goes to the state, 4% goes to the county. Well, with marijuana, there's going to be like 19% that goes to the state and 9% that goes to the state, well, plus an excise tax on top of that. So uh, at least 9% sales tax, 1% uh, will go to the county and 3% will go to the municipality, which is very interesting for a place like Lewis County that doesn't have sales tax uh, sharing agreements. So none of our towns and villages collect sales tax. So it'll be interesting to see how we're gonna navigate those waters. But um, that is the state law. So they've um, almost as an incentive structure because towns and villages and cities control zoning, um, you know, in an effort to incentivize them not to zone away marijuana dispensaries, uh, they're giving them the lion's share of the sales tax as kind of a carrot. Mm -hmm. um, so not what county governments were working for, considering especially in rural areas, we're the ones that have public safety, we're the ones that have public health. So if there are additional costs um, you know, from this legalization, it's gonna be the county that's gonna bear them and certainly not any town or village. Um, but we'll have to work through that. Um, and the state is going to be creating a new state agency to help us with that, so that would be great. Um, <laughs> also settled is um, some good news. Uh, CHIPS, our highway funding, was restored. Greg had mentioned earlier that we didn't do any roads last year, and he's right. We, we uh, you know, put that all on pause. Um, so it's good that uh, the 20% that was cut last year has been restored, and then um, Tim, who was very active in the, the uh, State Highway Association, sent me an email today. Um, the state legislature has, uh, without the governor, increased um, in, in the draft budget uh, the, the con contribution to highway by about 30%. So there's a chance that we could uh, do quite well in 21 uh, with CHIPS funding, which is good because we had a whole year where we didn't do much. Um, there's a couple items that are unsettled that we're watching. First is a proposal to increase income taxes on earners over a million dollars a year. It's a very controversial item. The governor has said he wouldn't support it. The legislature is going forward with it anyway. Um, so, you know, certainly something to watch. And then another unsettled item that can impact our balance sheet is sports uh, betting. 
that's something that the state's been trying to get up and running for a few years now uh, where uh, you could bet on you know, a college basketball game or an NFL game. Um, that's going to become legal. The question is how the governor wants another state agency that's going to basically be the state bookie, like Quick Draw. So um, you go into Quick Draw at, at a you know tavern in Buffalo, you go into Lauville, the, the Quick Draw that you see is the same. The state is running that. Um, so is the state going to run the book for sports betting, or are they going to allow each casino to set their own, uh, you know, uh, odds and, and uh, run their own sports books? So lots to watch there. Um, counties do get a portion of uh, casino revenue, so we would obviously like to see the casinos handle that um, from a county perspective because their revenue um, becomes our revenue to a certain extent. So we'll see. Um, Stimulus funds, I want to touch on this. Uh, we have to have a lot more discussion, in-depth discussion, about what we're going to do with those funds. I think it's safe to say that we're on the same page that some of those funds should go to broadband, um, and maybe more than a million, but we have to really dig in and do some, some more due diligence on that. There's some great programs that um, the IDA is working on. Um, I think uh, Eric will be giving his treasurer's report and and at the Finance and Rules Committee, um, we'll, we'll be going over the year-end budget. But you're going to see some numbers that show, you know, our bottom line doesn't necessarily need to take on, you know, additional funds and or fund balance. So I think a good frame of mind going into these discussions on the stimulus package is how can we spend it out in the community? How can we spend it in a way that uh, really can help our um, county recover from the last year of, of trouble that we've had? So um, hopefully that, that could be the, the frame of reference going forward. So um, those are the things that we're working on, and that concludes my report. Thanks. Questions for Brian? Yeah, how many pounds of how many pounds do you have at home, Brian? <laughs> Don't answer that word. <laughs> on advice of counsel, I'll decline to count. <laughs> yeah. Okay, treasury report, Eric. I provided you a written report uh, for your information. I do not have a lot of lot to comment above and beyond that. I think I have just a couple of notes on some of your earlier discussions. Um, I think uh, just tagging along with what Ryan just commented about our stimulus funds and our current financial situation. Um, if you look at the cash balances I provided, I think that that really needs to be considered. As Ryan really just indicated, that let's look at those things also along with. Um, the stimulus funding that we're going to be getting from the federal government and, and build a plan um, for the future and, and how we might utilize some of our funds. Um, I think I would also note, um, Ryan did not say this, but uh, we're starting to see that the withholds that the state took from us um, in 2020, the 20% withholds, are starting to come back in. Um, the state has been slow in paying for, you know, more than usual over the last 12 months, but we are, we are aware and are seeing some of those withholds coming back in. That's all I have if you have any questions. Questions for her? What do you think the chances are in moratorium will get extended again for foreclosures? Ah, uh, it would seem pretty good. You think it's gonna, is, this is it? Uh, no, no, I, would, I mean, it would seem like there, there's just an appetite to just continue to let people um, you know, slide on their obligations. So I, I would think the moratorium will get extended again. That's my gut feel, but I, I don't have any information to that effect. But I'm just curious. Thanks. Okay, so back to the public hearings. Anyone like to comment on uh, the New York State CDBG housing application for 2020 funds with? So about policy. Any comments on that? How about the public hearing on the proposed Lewis County Agricultural and Farmland Protection Plan? You don't have any comments on that one? Public hearing on proposed New York State Police Reform and Reinvention Collaborative Plan. Thoughts? <coughs> If not, we will close those three public hearings. 
And move on to the report of the Finance and Rules Committee per Rule 7. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Finance and Rules Committee reports that they have examined the claims presented for payment in the total amount of $1,557,141.55 and recommend that they be audited and allowed for the amounts claimed. The motion. Greg, second by Jerry. Any discussion? All in favor? All right. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Before we move on to resolutions, Ryan has one more thing. Sorry. He just likes to talk. Uh, turn on the projector. <laughs> we, uh, we began uh, the process of, of looking at some maybe new logos and branding for the county back in um, December. And Cassandra and, uh, and Connor and I have gotten some examples. Um, we've, we've gotten some samples. And so what we're looking for is for you guys to take a look at what we have and see if, um, if there's anything that strikes your fancy that we can move forward with and, and try to build on. Uh, it's just my PowerPoint. It should be up, right? I have to like editing this file. Oh, well, it's on, it's on the... Or the legislators. No? Yep. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is from the, the slide of uh, Cassie's presentation back in December, and the thought was a cohesive image that, you know, we've got this great seal now, but how can we, you know, maybe with some of our letterhead and some of our website stuff match what's been done with Naturally Lewis and the Chamber of Commerce, kind of all building on that same theme together. And so that's kind of what we we're looking for. Um, and also since then, we've got, had the launch of the Lewis County Health System. So they're looking to be a little more modern. Um, and so this is what we currently have, just as a reminder. Um, and so let's take a look at some of the new options. Uh, we had Coughlin do a preliminary design for us right in downtown Lowville, and uh, they did this. Um, <clears throat> you've got here ooh, the windmill and then a leaf, um, and it's almost like a raindrop type thing, and you've got Lewis you know, County, New York, so kind of a unique thing that they put together. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Uh, we've got, uh, we went with an online group called 99 Designs, and uh, they give you some samples that you can work with and try to drill down with, with a one or two um, graphic designers. And they came up with this concept, was, was probably the best out of the, the ones that we went through. Um, and uh, it's kind of interesting. It's the only one that has the, uh, um, the 1805, which is kind of cool. Um, and so they also kind of can show you how, you know, you work with a different color scheme with that same um, thought. But again, they're going with the windmills and the trees and the agriculture um, kind of image there. Um, and number three, which not to be biased, but is my personal favorite, um, was, is a local designer, Rachel Gruner. Um, she lives right in Lowville, and uh, she put this together very simple, but you've got the, uh, the, the Tug Hill Plateau to the east and the Adirondack Mountains to the west and the river that kind of runs through the middle. Um, and she gave us some supplementary things. Can you open that PDF too? Sorry. The one that... Uh, oh. I can't see. Uh, go to the, the zip drive. And then that, yeah. 
That's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you can use your middle. Not that much. <laughs> we did have this set up before. Wow. So. Yeah. All right. Um, so she just showed us kind of how the logo would look. Uh, the part of her presentation was um, how it would look on letterhead. So you've got the O kind of encompassing the, the, the little logo, and then you've got the logo that can be on its own. Scroll down, frame it. Um, oops. Yeah. So that's kind of how it would look like uh, on branding materials. So um, we haven't spent a lot of money. These are all preliminary designs. But uh, is there anything so far that kind of catches your eye that um, would want? Can you go back to the other one? The PowerPoint. Is there some reason why there's nothing with recreation? Snowmobiles, ATVs. Um, we gave everybody the same format. Um, I don't think we got any of that. Where I don't think we got any of that had snowmobile or ATV. We talked about. We definitely, you know, they they each will ask you to fill out a questionnaire of what you want to match, and we talked about recreation outdoors. Um, so. We could throw it in on that slide. Get rid of some of the pine trees. Um, did you think about offering this to the um, art classes at school? Or is that out of the picture? Well, I don't know. It, it certainly could be part of the picture. I don't know if you get the quality. I don't know what, what there is out there. Is I that really supposed know. to be a cow? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's Lady Glowinda. Oh, okay. that 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 that's where it's Lady Glowinda. Uh, so, I mean, we can go back to the drawing board, or, but but what elements do you like that we could work, you know, that we could, we could build off of? Is, is kind of what we're looking for. I, I think number three is quite modern, and I, I kind of like it, but I'd almost like to see the established 1805, maybe underneath it. That's that's a simple, yeah, that's a simple ad. Yeah. I, I think we were known for our wind towers, too. So. Yeah. Yeah, I can like the leaves. Which one do you like? The, I, I like one in three. Um, the little <laughs> wind tower leafing. I don't hate it. I like it. I think it's I don't, I don't like the one. <laughs> <laughs> that just... Brian, can you show them the... The gray scale too, because it's going to be really important. A lot of our offices don't have color. Uh, I don't think I put that. Oh, on. you don't have that on there. Okay. But you, it, Cassie's right. You have to look at these and think you're not always going to have color. So, for example, this one, you've got to think. That's why I, I used this as the main one because most of the time we don't print with this one. We really don't print with this much color. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you've got to think about what it's going to look like on our. Materials. And, and if the cab came problem. out in an ATV and a snowmobile went in there, that, that might be nice. So you could, this one you could fit more. Yeah, maybe yeah. we should only have yeah. two windmills, two windmills, four wheeler snowmobile. And a goat oh. in there, maybe? Oh, yeah. <laughs> put, a cow, you put a cow in there to make it look like a cow. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what kind of animal that one <laughs> So like I'm hearing. <laughs> well, I, I like number three, but it's you know until you pointed out, it's obscure what the graphic stands for, and if you put that in grayscale, it's not going to mean anything. Yeah. I think the the PDF does have an example of the grayscale. Yeah, it actually brought it into a model line. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Go back to that PDF. Oh boy. Scroll down, I think they had see you can kinda of see how there you go. So that's what it would look like, great scale. So we're you know, we're work it's a work in progress, but what are the some of the feedback I'm hearing is that uh, can you go back? Whatever they're doing there is not exactly what we're looking for. Um, 
but it could be modified. Right. Can you help? Yeah. One side of the windmills. We you like got one side of the windmills and now focus on recreation. Yeah. You um, got the two small yeah. windmills. And, and here. Put it with the trees. Put the recreation with the trees. Talk so look at what we've I'm got. Uh, oops. <laughs> here. Right? <laughs> So this is what our thought was, was try to match these somehow. So what are the elements, you know, just keep this in mind when we're looking at the other ones here. So I don't understand what you're saying there, right? So, you know, actually presentation wise, that first slide is the best of all, the one with naturally Lewis on it and uh, the, uh, yeah. What is that yeah. uh, But I don't know if you can use that for what you're trying to accomplish. Who designed those? Uh, page group designed naturally Lewis and did Rachel. Yeah. Rachel, the same woman that did uh, number three, did the uh, chamber. It was a delicate balance to balance government and <coughs> recreation and sustainability. So there were some that we got that were cartoonish. So so you got to think, we're going to put this on a letterhead. If somebody gets it, a company or someone mm -hmm. we're trying to do business with, they want to take it seriously. On the other hand, we have to represent what our community is all about. So that's the kind of balance that you're looking for. But so this would replace our purpose. No, we keep our seal. The seal is the but seal. Letterhead. But our branding would be a little different. <coughs> Business cards and letter <coughs> things like that. I'm gonna take the cow off for a barn Because that would look a little more yeah. 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 do something like that. That's what we're known for is agriculture. <laughs> yeah. So I'm hearing we like windmills, we like the outdoor recreation aspect, um, the perhaps a way to incorporate agriculture. Um, is there, if you had to lean towards anyone to, so here's the deal, if you go, the, the reason why we narrowed it down to three is because to go all in with a graphic designer is going to cost more money. So we can't keep, you know, we got to kind of pick one and, and dive in. With it. So we can't keep moving three along. We got to pick one. Number one is interesting, but there's not enough of what Lewis County is about in there. The way I look. <coughs> Like number two, I mean, even though it's black and white, um, or it's going to be great. I mean, you could still put some mountains in the background if you put the windmills up there. Mm -hmm. So you can get part of that. Um, and you still might be able to get a stream in there. There's something about like number two that makes it, I don't know, like, um, Cartoonish or something, you know, it's, I don't know, it's like stick people. Or, <laughs> yeah, I, don't know. I think it's definitely in like professionally number three. Um, would be my favorite. Um, however, I don't like it when they do just the, the black and white. But I do, I think that presents I think the best side of all three, though I can't say that I didn't know any of them. <laughs> I don't, that's, 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 I don't like them. I, right. I don't love it. I like number three, like for a background, if you could somehow incorporate, you know, a snowmobile or wind tower in there. <laughs> but yeah, that may make it too busy. Right? Yeah. So, Cassie, what are you, you've been, Cassie's been the lead here. So, it has been a nightmare to incorporate <laughs> literally all of those elements into one image yeah. because you that you cannot do it. It looks terrible. And number two is busy enough that it kind of gives me anxiety. Yeah. But um, number one, we just have to be careful because it's portrait style. 
and it and it doesn't do well. A portrait typically doesn't do well on a letterhead. Just just to give everybody kind of a, a perspective on that. Um, number three just came with a couple different options. Uh, you could put the the symbol or the the image inside the O, and it just created a little bit of a an interesting change to the logo. It by far looks the most professional, and it is done by a Lewis County resident, which is huge. Um, but I, I just think all of the designs that I've looked at, having all of that incorporated, it's so busy, and it takes away from us wanting to project a professional, clean, modern image for people who want to come live in Lewis County, want to come work in Lewis County, we want to be taken seriously. So that that's the only feedback I have. I don't want to portray too much of my opinion. But. Well, I can tell you, Connor and Cassie have, have been doing it together, um, and they both like number three. Like <laughs> but um, you know, it's a, that's why it's back to you guys, you know, for feedback and what we want to do to, to move it forward. So if we can spend more money, get more designs, but you eventually got to try to dig down on something. Or we can go a different route and go to someone like the Page Group, who's going to come in. Have a session like this. Come back with sketches. You know, this is kind of us not spending a lot of money. You can spend more money on this. So it all depends on what you guys want to do. <laughs> if it were me, I would go with uh, Rachel and you know try to give her feedback to get closer to try to incorporate some of the things that we like. You know, she hasn't done the other logo. Logo. So. That would be fine. The only thing we have to remember is, is that Cassandra will never let us use color ink. Cassandra. So true. <laughs> you had one number three, but it was just black and white. It didn't have the color in it. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Can you bring up the media? I should have put that yeah. on. Yeah, right there. Yeah. That almost stands out better for what you were explaining. The mountains, the river, and the colored one, my opinion. So most of the time, that's what it will look like. Except right. for on our website, on flyers, things that we print with gloss and color. But most of the time, it'll be, you know, black and white. Because we don't want to use colored ink. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was the reason. <laughs> I can print a color at home if I have to. <laughs> it comes with a box of crayons. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anyone that would, that would be interested in if we, you know, bring Rachel in and and do a session with her? Would any of you guys want to come and chat with her? Not as a committee meeting, but as a separate thing. You know. Or do we like things the way they are and we just stick them over to Also, Rachel has put together a package that she can do everything, like the business card templates, letterheads, and everything um, for a really low rate. And she can send that to our team and distribute it to everybody so it's a clean distribution to all the departments. Or you're in for after committee meeting, after our committee meeting. See if, she, if, uh, See if she's available. And we can ask her questions. We can get, get our input. And maybe she can, you know, designers do, you know, they just need, sometimes just need a little more information from other people. And they go wild with it. I think one thing with Cassie and I were debriefing when we talked to these folks, I think we were a little strict on the, don't forget it's government. Like, you know, we want. We still send some pretty serious letters sometimes, and we wanted it to be, you know, government. So I think we we kind of constrained some people a little bit, maybe more than we should have. No. Um, but well, could you have two different letter ads? One for the one mean for letter, one for the nice letter. <laughs> <laughs> Leave this old style yeah. for the mean letter. <laughs> Which one is the how? Yeah. 
you could tell by the envelope whether it's good letter or, <laughs> or whether it's color or black and white. Or it's <laughs> All right, we'll bring Rachel in and, and just keep kind of chipping away. Um, but we got to decide. You know, we, we can't keep going full design with three different options. We got to have to go in. Okay, good. That's it. Sorry. No. <laughs> okay, we're on resolutions. Are there any resolutions that anyone would like to pull? Out of the slate uh, to have an independent discussion on. We are going to pull number 79 and 64. And, then, and we'll do the late resolution number 84 separately as well. Okay. Um, I do want to note, just so everybody knows, we are withdrawing number 67 or 68, resolution number 68 is being withdrawn. Okay, so anyone have any other resol additional resolutions you'd like to hold on independently? So, could I have a motion to move the slate forward? Greg, second by Lisa. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? The slate carries. <coughs> Okay, resolution number 64, auditing and allowing claims in the amount of $1,557,141.55. Moved by Greg, second by Jerry. Any discussion? And this is roll call. Yes. Uh, Legislator Gilbert? Yes. Legislator Morgan? Yes. Legislator Berkler? Yes. Legislator Osborne? Yes. Legislator Hathaway has been excused. Legislator King? Yes. Legislator Burns and Legislator Chartrand have been excused. Legislator Calzer? Yes. And Legislator Dahlhoff? Yes. Resolution 79, uh, resolution rejecting all bids received for the solid waste transfer station scale house building construction project. Moved by Jerry, second by Andrea. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? That carries. Okay. Resolution number 84, resolution adopting policy and procedures for communicable disease disaster emergency declared by New York State. Moved by Jerry, second by Lisa. Discussion. Uh, I, can, I can comment on that policy. This is required by an executive order. Every local government has to adopt a pandemic staffing policy. Um, I don't think our local government had any problem during the pandemic, but others across the state may have. Um, the reason that this resolution is replacing the one in your packet 
is because the state required that uh, we give it to the union for comment. And um, so they had a couple of comments that were reasonable, so they were included. Um, so it's just slightly amended, that's all. Okay, any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? That carries. Other business. Proclamation commemorating April 23rd, 2021 is fair housing. Yes, Mr. Chairman. I have two proclamations to read. The first one is a proclamation commemorating April as Fair Housing Month. Whereas the Fair Housing Act enacted in on April 11th, 1968, enunciates a national policy of fair housing without regard to race, color, religion, sex, familial status, handicap, and national origin, and encourages fair housing opportunities for all. And whereas Lewis County Legislature and the Lewis County the Jefferson Lewis Board of Realtors are committed to highlight the Fair Housing Act by continuing to address discrimination in our community, to support programs that will educate the public about the right to equal housing opportunities, and to plan partnership efforts with other organizations to help assure everyone of their right to fair housing. And whereas the National Association of Realtors Code of Ethics commits all realtors to provide equal professional services without discrimination based on race, color, religion, sex, handicap, familial status, national origin, sexual orientation, or gender identity. Now, therefore, I, Lawrence L. Dahlhoff, Chairman of the Lewis County Board of Legislators, do hereby proclaim April 2021 as Fair Housing Month in Lewis County as a year-long commemoration of the Fair Housing Act and urge all citizens to wholeheartedly recognize this celebration throughout the year. The second proclamation is commemorating April 2021 as Child Abuse Prevention Month. Whereas children are vital to our state's future success, prosperity, and quality of life, as well as being our most vulnerable assets. Whereas all children deserve to have the safe, stable, nurturing homes and communities they need to foster their healthy growth and development. Whereas ch child abuse and neglect is a community responsibility affecting both the current and future quality of life of a community. Whereas communities that provide parents with the social support, knowledge of parenting and child development and concrete resources they need to cope with stress and nurture their children, ensuring all children grow to their full potential. Whereas effective child abuse prevention strategies succeed because of partnerships created among citizens, human service agencies, faith communities, healthcare providers, civic organizations, law enforcement agencies and the business community. Now, therefore, I, Lawrence L. Dahlhoff, Chairman of the Lewis County Board of Legislators, do hereby claim, proclaim April 2021 as Child Abuse Prevention Month and call upon all citizens, community agencies, faith groups, medical facilities, elected leaders, and businesses to increase their participation in our efforts to support families, thereby preventing child abuse and strengthening the communities in which we live. Thank you. Okay, we need a motion to go into an executive session, and the reason yes, is... Yes, Mr. Chairman, I'm requesting the executive session to discuss the legal options and the potential liabilities associated with the condemned property in, in turn. And um, I am requesting the um, superintendent of highways to stay, Tim Hunt, and also uh, the mayor from the, from the village. So we're going to make that motion. Jerry, second by Tom. All in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Okay, we're take a five minute recess and then uh, executive session.